Within the constantly growing population of luxury SUV and crossover buyers, there are usually those within that sort of populace that say, I don't want the typical small or medium-sized crossover for my family. I want something big. I want something that is so out there and so in your face that you just can't help but wonder, are they really that old school? Well, if you're that type of buyer, then stick around because today on the driveway, we're going for a spin and showing you all around a little bit more of an aging full-size SUV, the 2021 Lexus GX. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so welcome to the 2021 Lexus GX. And the fun part about me getting to drive this vehicle is this now completes the entire set of Lexus crossovers and SUVs that I have ever driven. I have now driven every single one that the company makes, and this is the second of Lexus's V8 SUVs that I've gotten to drive. I drove the bigger version of this a few years ago, but this is the one that has sort of eluded me for a little while but because this is such a big vehicle it does also mean that it carries a pretty sizable price tag and uh, even though the Moroni that I have today is digital in this case it still does reflect the fact that this is not an inexpensive vehicle by any stretch now the one we're driving today is a GX 460 luxury so that does mean we have all the higher end amenities as standard however being a Lexus it still does come with some pretty pricey options MSRP on this one is $64,365 which is still quite a chunk of change on its own but you want things like a premium audio system that's $1,150 you want things like an off-road package that's $1,600 you want the new sport design package that's over two grand add all the other options in plus a $1,025 delivery processing and handling fee and this whole package comes up to $71,255 as it sits holy moly I thought this thing was big to look at or big to drive, but that price tag, whew, I'm going to tell you, you need to open your pocketbook pretty wide for this one. But overall, the question I want to know is, despite the fact it's a bigger vehicle, does it still drive like a Lexus should? Well, let's hit the start button, get on the road, and let's see. Now, if you are the type of person who lives by the statement of go V8 or go home, then the Lexus GX will fit right into your lifestyle. However, if you're looking for a V8 full-size SUV with an engine of 5 liters or more, then this car may fall short of your expectations just a hair, as it has with mine over the week that I've had it. First off, the engine is a 4.6 liter double overhead cam V8 with of course the usual variable valve timing with intelligence and all that junk and it makes a rather lowly 301 horsepower and 329 foot-pounds of torque which on paper and certainly from where I'm sitting doesn't feel like a whole lot especially when you consider that as this model sits you're looking at around 5200 pounds curb weight and the sort of feeling I'm getting driving this thing is like driving a less refined Mercedes G-Wagon. I've got loads of room in here, tons of headspace, 
but you feel like you're sitting a little bit more higher up. You kind of feel like you're sitting over the top of the wheel a little bit. And also, the ride quality isn't exactly the greatest thing out there. Currently, I have the adjustable air suspension in its most comfortable setting and the adjustable ride height in its normal setting or sort of the middle of the road. And um, it doesn't float along a, like a cloud like I kind of expected it to. I sort of feel a lot more of the bumps and stuff like that in the road and it's not always been my favorite part of driving the GX. Now, of course, with such a big engine and only six gears in the transmission and a full-time four-wheel drive system, the GX is not going to be your friend when it comes to going to the gas station because not only is the gas tank quite large, it also returns a lowly rating of 15 miles per gallon in the city and 19 miles per gallon on the highway. Now, during the week that we've had this truck, I've averaged, keep this in mind, averaged about 13 and a half miles to the gallon. So I would say that the EPA or even Lexus is overstating their fuel ratings by at least a couple MPGs. Now there are some benefits to the GX, which is that it still carries that sort of air of quality as you drive down the road. Despite the fact it's as big as a house and it has a motor that wouldn't look out of place in a pickup truck, it actually feels very Lexus-like. It's very quiet and on the right road surfaces it does kind of smooth itself out a little bit despite the fact that I can feel still some more of the bumps and little undulations in the road here and there. But overall, I mean, I've actually really enjoyed driving this truck. I feel um, very commanding when I'm on the road. Obviously, the size has something to do with that and I just feel like I'm wrapped in more of that luxury air than I thought I was going to when I very first started driving this truck. Now, I said it's quiet in here, but the one thing you do notice is that with such a big engine and with such big cooling needs, when you first set off in this truck and you turn the tri-zone climate control system on, you get this massive whoosh of air from this cooling system and the fans up front. And it just kind of makes me feel like I'm driving a bus a little bit, which is not such a bad thing because I do like driving a bigger truck every once in a while. At the end of the day though, let's face the facts because the Lexus GX, or at least as this one sits here, costs at least 20 grand more than a Lexus RX, which is definitely the most popular Lexus SUV currently driving on the roads today. And yes, the RX is a lot smoother in the way that not only it delivers the power, but also it doesn't need a giant V8 to get it where it needs to go. So therefore you aren't getting all of the whooshes from the cooling system or the woeful gas mileage of, you know, 15 to 17 miles per gallon on a good day. But overall, $71,000 is a lot of money to be spending on a big SUV like this. That being said, however, you are spending that money on a statement. This thing feels like it's got some real presence out on the road. So if you are the type of person who likes to go everywhere kind of shouting, look at me to everybody else on the road, well, the GX can certainly do that no problem. Now that brings me to my next point. As nice as it is to drive this big land barge of a Lexus SUV, it is even better to look at in some cases. So let's head back to our favorite little spot and talk about the rest of the details. Now over the years, I have thought that the Lexus GX has become a very handsome vehicle. I love sort of the off-road sculpted styling that Lexus has instilled in their second largest SUV. However, there is one option on my test vehicle that's not quite sitting right with me. And no, it's not the atomic silver paintwork here because even though on camera it looks a beautiful bright silver, in the sunlight it looks almost like it has sort of a champagne color to it and that's not quite suited to my taste as much but on this car it's actually the sport design package i'm not quite a fan of things like those lip extensions that you'll find on the front and rear bumpers i think it's just a little too flashy for me i'm more so a fan of like the normal design gx especially if it was like in white i think this thing looks absolutely fantastic however the design of it is not bad i love things like the design of the headlights on this one they've got the black inner surrounds with the triple beam design auto leveling and adjusting and of course 
course, auto high beam assist are standard. We have the L-shaped daytime running lights as well. You will find some incandescent bulbs, i.e. your turn signals down here below, but we also have LED fog lights. We have the intuitive park assist with the sensors that line both the front and rear of the vehicle. And this is one of those Lexus cars where I actually like the look of the spindle grille. I love the metallic gray insert in the middle with these big, chunky sort of patterns going across the inner workings of it. Of course, we do have the uh, shrouded in Lexus badge, of course, for the sensors for the uh, Lexus Safety System Plus. And on this one, as you can see up front, we have a forward-facing camera. As I mentioned in the options list, as part of the off-road package, we do have the panoramic monitor, which should come in handy if you decide to take your 70 plus thousand dollar Lexus off-road. Now, in comparison to a lot of today's five, six, or even seven passenger medium-sized crossovers, what I love about the GX is, again, it's more sort of bulky nature. It sits a lot higher compared to a lot of those other vehicles. Even something like a Lexus RX is definitely a lot more sleeker compared to something like this. However, lengthwise, it is about the same size as a lot of today's smaller three rows. Nose to tail is about 192.1 inches long, although, as you can see, we have a much much larger greenhouse and back section compared to those smaller vehicles. Now, speaking of size, one thing that the Sport Design Package adds that I do like is this set of 19-inch dark gray finished aluminum alloy wheels. Now, if these were painted silver, I don't think I would like them as much, speaking specifically of this wheel design, but I actually think, regardless of what color it is, even the atomic silver here, I like the darker finish on these wheels down below. We have four-wheel disc brakes, as you would expect, about 13 and a half inch rotors in front and just under 13 or just under 12 and a half inch rotors in the rear. As you can see, we also have the side steps here along the side of the vehicle. I really, really like that as well. And if you look up in the wheel well here, you can see remnants of that adaptive variable suspension and the adaptive height control. And of course, as you come down the side, all the features are exactly what you'd think of in a Lexus. You've got the body colored side view mirrors, which of course the mirrors themselves are actually pretty sizable, just like a lot of other elements of this vehicle. Of course, you have the lashings of chrome, LED turn signal across the outside. They each do have a camera hidden underneath, of course, as a part of that around view monitor. And they also come with blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert. But fun fact about these, they are power folding, but not in the way you might expect. Most vehicles, when you lock or unlock them, say in this case with the advanced keyless access fob here, uh, normally when you lock it, they fold in. When you unlock it, they fold out. However, there is a little switch right just to the left of the steering column that allows you to fold them in or out only when the vehicle is powered on. So say when I lock it using the advanced keyless fob here, which as you can see is the typical sculpted Lexus key with lock, unlock, uh, the trunk function, panic, and the releasable key, uh, key blade that comes out of the bottom here. And that also has the signature touch points on the door. So if you wanna lock it, just touch the little rib at the front of the door handle, unlock it, you just grab the handle as normal. Now with as much grief as I was giving the design of this vehicle thanks to the Sport Design Package, I really am more of a fan of the front of this truck compared to how I am at the back. And the main reason for that, well, there's a couple of them. The first of which is that the normal GX comes with full clear tail lights on them. But on this example here, as you can see, the Sport Design Package adds the scarlet tail lights, and I just think it sort of makes the truck look a little older than it's supposed to be. The clear ones with the red LEDs in them, I actually like those. Um, I actually think they look a little bit more modern, a little bit more luxurious. But here with the Sport Design Pack and those red tail lights, I, I'm just not seeing it here. But the other thing, again, that I'm not a fan of is that extension going across the lower part of the rear bumper. I just think, you know, if it was a normal design, I think it would look a little bit better. I kind of am digging the dark gray tail uh, or the dark gray exhaust down. Down there but that lower lip extension down across the bottom just still not doing it for me however the tail lights themselves they're almost full LED with the exception of the turn signals those remain incandescent just like you get up in the front of course you have the standard GX badging as well and of course things like a standard backup camera hidden just underneath the Lexus badge now the one fun fact I like about the rear of the GX is that it actually has a split level tailgate and it doesn't operate in the way that you might expect. First of all, when you come back here, you have a little button and even as long as you have the key fob on you, you push it and you can pop open just the rear glass.
However, my other favorite thing back here is, first of all, you notice there are two little buttons and a handle hidden right here around inside the license plate frame. You'll notice they say lock and unlock. You can actually use the keyless access fob to lock and unlock the vehicle just from this rear area here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the unlock button and you reach inside and grab the handle and instead of the tailgate going up, it swings open like a giant door. And of course, once you open that big door, you are greeted with a pretty sizable cargo area back here that actually houses a third row of seats. Now, as you can see, we have the cargo liner in place right here, so that third row of seats is hidden all the way down. If you want to bring them back up, there are a couple of buttons right here in the door frame. They will power operate and you can fold them all the way up, making this a six seater, again, with that optional row of captain's chairs that we have on this one. But I don't exactly have all the figures compared to behind the third row, the second row, and with all the seats down. However, maximum cargo volume with everything laid in its flattest position is 64.7 cubic feet of cargo space, which is more than enough should you find yourself needing uh, to have uh, slightly uh, larger objects in the back back here. And also, some other cool stuff happens when you look in the door. You have all the uh, tool storage kits hidden back here, like your jack and everything else hidden here in the door. And you also have the ability to lock or unlock this back door in place. So if you wanna lock it, you just twist this little latch right here. As you can see, once it fixes itself in the lock position, that door will then stay open and you have to twist it back like that in order to close it. Now, if you thought the outside of this particular GX was not as sporty as you might want, then take a look at the inside of my test car. Okay, I know a lot of the interior pieces we've seen on Lexus products before, but take a look at this. Full red leather seats here on this particular one, and quite frankly, I don't know about the red interior. I mean, I like it, don't get me wrong, but I think it belongs on something more like an ES or maybe a GS or something a little more sporty. On a big SUV like this, knowing the sort of demographic that gets into vehicles like this, I think the interior belongs in more of like a black or gray, maybe even something a little adventurous like the Flaxen or the Toasted Caramel, I think would fit this interior better. But as for the red, mm, well, I'm just not digging it. Now, the front seats are heated and ventilated for both sides, which is always nice, although I have found that the ventilation part doesn't exactly work as well as I'd like it to. It sort of feels a little too uh, underwhelming in that respect. The front seats are of course heated, or not only heated and ventilated, but also power adjustable. So you have the two-way lumbar, the distance or recline, uh, the ability to raise the front of the seat up, and of course the ability to move it back and forth. You have some nice illuminated side sill plates on my test car as well, which I really like. And then as you come to the left of the steering column, we do have things such as the power tilt and telescoping mechanism that is standard on the luxury model here. We do have a few little extra buttons such as the mirror controls, including the switch that I talked about earlier Earlier, which allows you to fold the mirrors in. You also have things like your instrumentation uh, dimming, you have the odometer and trip meter, and the button that allows you to toggle through the different camera systems. You also have the heated steering wheel, automatic high beam assist, traction control, and the button that allows you to activate your headlight washers. Now, just like the outside of the GX, as much as I wanted to absolutely adore the interior, because I really do love a lot of Lexus's interiors these days, certain elements of the GX's inside feel, well, a little too old. And I'll talk about what those are here in just a bit, but you still do have plenty of modern Lexus conveniences like the half leather and half uh, laminated wood steering wheel here. Of course, as I said, it is heated and it is very comfortable. I mean, I've seen this steering wheel in several other Lexus products before. You got the nice big grip extensions up here at the top, nice place to rest your hand. And of course it is adorned with all the buttons you could possibly want, like the aero pad for the thin film transistor display up here in the middle, nice and bright definition to that as well, along with things like the back button, the pages of a book, which allow you to toggle through various bits of information. You also have things like the distance control sensor and the button for the lane departure warning with active steering assist, not to mention the main cruise control stock, which always hangs off the bottom right-hand corner of the steering column, which I always really like. And of course, you have your hands-free radio controls as well, like your hands-free Bluetooth, voice recognition, radio mode, seat track, and volume buttons to complete the set. 
Now, if there's one area out of the entire GX's interior that I dislike the most, it's right here. The eight inch touchscreen display that quite frankly looks like it belongs in something from around say 2010, 2011. Although it has been updated with the latest uh, Lexus Inform app suite, things like that. It's not like the 12 and a half inch or so displays that normally Lexus puts in like a tablet like fixture that would normally be sitting somewhere up here on the top of the dash. But in this case, as you can see, it's fixed in the dash. And like I said, only eight inches from corner to corner. Now, what really is my gripe with this system is not so much the sort of lackluster navigation system, for example, which we've seen on Lexus products before. Um, it does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in it, but it's things like the fact that if you want to operate the climate control, you have to go into the climate tab. If you look at all the buttons down here uh, for things like the temperature and certain climate control functions, there's no fan speed button anywhere down here. It's all hidden within the climate function on the screen itself, which is a bit annoying. I kind of wish they had included some climate control buttons down here uh, for things like your fan speed, climate zones, etc. cetera. Uh, but here, as you can see, I've got my climate zones over here on the right, fan speed on the left. You can go back to the home button if you wish, which operates the split screen. So audio on the right, Navi on the left. And of course you have other functions like your Bluetooth phone, uh, your infotainment and app suite, generalized setup. And you also have a tab, which isn't even a button at all. It's just simply a button to let you, or a light to let you know that the security system has been activated. Now, as dated as the screen looks, Lexus knows how to do one thing right, which is the audio system in here. And you guys heard me talk about this having a premium audio system well this one has a 17 speaker mark levinson audio system as an option and quite frankly i've never had a complaint about mark levinson they've always had great things to offer in their products and here in this one well it sounds better than ever However, despite the aging infotainment system and the smaller size of the screen, you still get all the regular creature comforts of every Lexus product, such as, like I said, the around view monitor with the adjustable backup camera. As you can see, I can have it as a full wide screen or I can have it as a more narrow screen with the 360 monitor included. It does have the automatic door locks as well. So when I put it in any gear other than park and start rolling, the doors will automatically lock themselves. When I put it back in park, they automatically open up again. Now, with that being said, remember that camera button over by the side of the steering wheel? If I hit it again while I'm in park, as you can see, now I'm looking out the front of the vehicle and I can bring up the 360 monitor as well. As you continue a little further down, the radio functions are pretty basic as well. First of all, with a lit CD player here in the middle. Again, welcome back to the 90s, everybody. And we also have the volume and power knob and your tuning and scrolling knob, nice, big and chunky, just like the rest of the parts of this vehicle. Now, once you get to the GX's center console, the first thing you notice is you've got this beautiful gloss finish sort of trim here in the middle. I kind of like the metallic goldish kind of strips going through. It doesn't look like fake wood or anything like that. It's a very beautiful and uh, very elegant design to the trim here in the middle. The first thing you need to know is that you actually have a sliding cup holder or a cubby hole up here in the front, which houses your auxiliary port, two USB ports in the middle, and one 12 volt, 120 watt outlet, as well as a nice little bit of storage if you need things like your masks, you need to put a place, uh, put them in a place that's nice and secure. You can go ahead and do that. And of course it is pushed to close as well. And you also have his, uh, the three stage settings for your heated and ventilated seats up here in the front as well well. Now, when you move back to things like the gear selector, for example, the first thing you notice is that the gear shifter is very tall. It sits up nice and high. So especially if you're a little bit taller like me, you like resting your elbow on the center console here. It is a perfect place to rest your arm, especially when you're in sport mode, which just simply happens when you push it over to the left, you can push up to go up a gear and pull back to go down a gear. However, the main attention here in the center belongs to these four switches. 
features. So we have the crawl and multi-terrain select mode, which you can only access when you're in things like reverse or drive. Uh, we also have the two four-wheel drive settings. So you push down on the switch, which is normally set in high, uh, four high, and you could push down and pull back and put it into four low. Now you also have that adjustable height control that I was talking about earlier. You push the trigger up, uh, you can put it in its highest setting, pull it back, you can go into neutral or you could drop it all the way down into the lowest setting. And then you have the three modes for the adaptive dampening suspension. Now coming further back in the console, you have another little section here with your two sizable cup holders in it, which is actually big enough to hold a small or even a medium size bottle of Gatorade. I've actually noticed these uh, bigger bottles of Gatorade somehow will actually fit not all the way down in, but fit comfortably here in the cup holders in the middle. However, I would recommend things like a 20 ounce bottle of soda or maybe a larger size drink from your local fast food joint if you want something to fit in there more comfortably. Now, the cool part is once you get into the center console itself right here, you have a couple of different ways you can use it. You can either open it all the way up. As you can see, I've got my key sitting right there. I've got a few other odds and ends hanging out in here as well or if I close it, you actually have the ability to extend the armrests out of the top right here. Now, because the GX is as big as it is, getting into the back seat of this vehicle is not a single problem at all. Again, we've got more of the red leather going on back here, nice and bright, just to add a little bit more of a flare to the interior. And of course, with the captain's chairs in place, it does mean that the rear seat comforts are actually quite acceptable. First of all, shut the door. You get a nice big thunk as always, and you get sort of a stadium style seating effect back here. I'm actually sitting up quite high in comparison to not only the back of the front seats, but also the dashboard itself. Now, you do have some cool creature comforts back here. First of all, you can see we have a nice little armrest back here, but I also have these foldable cup holders that pop right out of the bottom. Now, you notice because I have no center console, that these cup holders are almost like movie theater style. So instead of, say, being down there on the floor where I have two 2.1 amp USB chargers, as well as rear heated seat controls in the third area for the uh, climate zone controls, um, basically there's just an open space right there, which is nice because I wouldn't want to be kicking my drinks over, say, on a long road trip. In conclusion, the Lexus GX may be a bit of a dinosaur with its older V8 engine and aging technology. However, let's not forget that it has been around for quite some time. And if you're not a fan of the small or medium sized crossovers on the market today, but you still want a big, bold, luxury SUV that makes more of a statement out on the road and still has all the luxury amenities to keep you happy, then the Lexus GX will fit that bill nicely. But that wraps it up for today's review. So if you guys like this video or perhaps you learned something today please give this video a thumbs up and also while you're at it hit that subscribe button down below because trust me it does benefit the both of us at the end of it at the end of the day though the credit goes right back to lexus usa for allowing us access to more of their vehicles for an entire week of driving around but at the end of it all guys i hope you enjoyed the review and i will see y'all next time take care everybody stay safe